Hello everyone and welcome to Chess Swipe. And today I'm going to show you how to play King's Indian Defense. And the reason I'm going to show you the King's Indian Defense here is because King's Indian Defense is a very aggressive opening. And this opening is usually played by black pieces. And I personally feel it is the best reply to play against 1d4 or should I say Queen's Gambit. Yeah. Um, it is, I usually feel personally that the best reply to play against 1d4 is to play king's indian defense and king's indian defense is played by many top level grandmasters and if you know this opening you i think you are, you are going to be a very strong player so i have chosen one game which game the game is going to be very interesting so i think from that game you are going to learn very much and perhaps you can use that ideas in your games and be a very nice player so the game is between robert bryan and bobby fisher and i think everyone must know who is bobby fisher he, he have been the world chess champion although he, he have been uh died but okay he is a fantastic chess player and if i talk about robert and bryan uh, robert bryan is also a very powerful chess player so don't underestimate him and that that is the reason the game is going to be very interesting and very Fabulous. So till then stay tuned and keep watching Chess Vibes. So Robert Bryan with the white pieces and Bobby Fisher with the black pieces. So let's start. So Robert Bryan with the white pieces started with 1d4 and we have knight to f6 by Bobby Fisher. This is the King's Indian. We have c4 by white g6 by black so this is the re this is the main line to play king's indian defense yeah, if, if you want to play something like um, queen's gambit you can go for something like e6 or if you want to play nims indian you can still go for e6 but we are going to see king's indian which is a very aggressive line so we have g6 by black g3 by white so the reason white player g3 here is here the idea of robert bryan here here is he wants to play g3 the idea of playing g3 here is here he knows that bobby fisher is going to play bishop g7 so he's he's planning to play bishop g2 and he's uh planning to copy black structure yeah so perhaps the, if the game would be symmetrical so it would be much easier for him um, to defend himself so this is the reason he played g3 but after playing g3 bobby fisher played c6 on the move number three so the idea of playing c6 here is here he, bobby fisher definitely wants to play bishop g7 but he wants to play d5 as well stopping this ideas of e4 grabbing more space on the center this is the reason he played c6 he wants to play d5 uh, so after c6 we have bishop g2 by white d5 by black here we have c into d5 c into d5 knight to c3 bishop g7 e3 by white so yeah just keeping away solid pawn chain castle by black knight e2 knight to c6 castle by white b6, uh, b6 by black so the idea of playing b6 here is here black can play bishop g7 bishop b7 or he can play bishop to a6 as well because bishop a6 definitely looks very interesting yeah Hitting the knight on e2 as well as creating some pressure on the rook on f1. So okay, after b6 we have b3 by white. So Robert Bryan is trying to copy Bobby Fischer's move. So after b3 we have bishop a6 by black. Bishop to a3 by white. Okay. Rook to e8 by black. So perhaps black wants to push his e pawn. And now the rook is no longer uh, being hanging on f8. That's why Bobby Fisher just moved the rook first because the rook was hanging on f8. So after rook e8, we have queen to d2 by white. Perhaps planning to play rook c1 followed by rook fd1. Perhaps this could be the idea. We have e5 by black. So just going forward, trying to open up the center immediately. After e5, we have a couple of exchanges of pawn. And after knight into e5, we have rook to d1 by white actually playing rook f to d1 was a mistake by white 
a better move at the place of playing rook f2 d1 a better move could be to play rook a to d1 the reason rook a d1 was much better which was played in the game which is rook f to d1 you are going to see after playing rook f d1 we have knight d3 by bobby fisher and after playing knight d3 it definitely looks very dangerous for white yeah because there could be some deadly ideas i don't know perhaps there could be so but what robert Bryan thought in this position here is he thought okay definitely the knight is very powerful on d3 but where it is go going yeah he can just go back to c5 perhaps or he can go back to e5 so he just simply moved queen to c2 just moving the queen which was a blunder by white a better move for white could be to play knight to f4 in this position the reason knight to f4 is the best after knight f4 we have knight to e4 by black hitting the queen on d2 so white have to capture up the knight on e4 with the knight we have d into e4 after rook to b1 because the rook was hanging on a1 so that's why white have to move the rook and after rook to b1 we have rook to c8 uh, and after playing rook to c8 okay uh, black is uh, slightly better in this position but okay white can play this position but at the place of knight f4 we have queen to c2 by white which was a blunder so i want all of you guys to feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for black in this position yeah so okay so all of those who have found the right move congratulations yeah um, you are a proud student of bobby fisher if you found knight into f2 congratulations this is the best move and this was the move played by bobby fisher he, yeah he's a very attacking chess player so obviously he goes for attack so after knight into f2 white is not having much to do he have to capture up the knight so white captured up the knight and now we have a fourth continuation after king into f2 if you thought knight to g4 check congratulations it's a check so you have to move the king king went back to g1 and now we have knight into e3 capturing of the pawn hitting the queen on c2 as well as the rook on d1 so queen definitely have to move from the c2 square so we have queen to d2 and in this position i want all of you guys to tell me one move uh, what should we do i'm going to give you two options after playing queen d2 what should black play? should the knight on e3 should capture the rook on d1 or should the knight on e3 should capture the bishop on g2 so feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for black in this position so okay. so all of those who have thought okay knight should capture the rook on d1 because obviously yeah, the rook is much powerful than knight definitely you are definitely right but in this position if you thought knight should capture the rook sorry but this was not the right move the best move for black in this position would have to capture the bishop on g2 the reason knight should capture the bishop in this position is first of all black have already given a sacrifice so obviously white is a piece plus yeah but in return white uh, black received a weak king on g1 so what should black do is to try to weak the white king more and more so at the place of capturing up the rook on d1 which is doing nothing it's better to capture up the bishop on g2 which is protecting the king on g1 that's why if you try even try to capture the rook on d1 by playing knight into d1 after playing rook into d1 you can play rook c8 trying to create much pressure on the knight on c3 but white is simply going to capture up the pawn on d5 with the bishop and it's an equal position actually white is even slightly better that is the reason after knight into d1 this is not going to work that's why what happened in the game here is your bobby fisher gone for knight into g to capture up the bishop fantastic move so white have to capture the knight back and after playing king into g2 bobby fisher found a fantastic move which is d4 by black fantastic move by black so the idea of black here is very simple 
White is threatening to black is threatening to capture up the knight on c3. So if if I look uh, deeply, the pawn on d4 is hanging. So this is what happened. White simply captured the pawn on d4. But um, obviously, Bob Fischer is not going to give up pawn for free. Now comes a fantastic move by Black, which is Bishop to b7 check. This is the this was the reason White uh, Black sacrificed the pawn by playing d4 to open up the bishop diagonal. And now the bishop on b7 is attacking the king on g1. So the king on g1, uh, g2 is half to move from the g2 square. We have king to f1 by white. And now comes a uh, fantastic and slow move by Bobby Fischer, which is queen to d7. And after playing queen d7 on the move number 21, Robert Bryant with the white pieces resigned the game and Bobby Fischer with the black pieces won the game. Fantastic game played by Bobby Fischer and all of those who were thinking why Robert Bryant resigned in this position. Yeah, he's two point plus. So why did he resign? The serious threat of black in this position is, is to play queen to h3 check. This is the main plan of black. So according to engine, the best move for white is to play knight to f3. The idea of playing knight f3 here is here. Um, white is asking for a queen trade. Yeah. And if black tries to trade the queen, white is going to capture the queen with the knight. And after knight to d2, black is slightly better, but definitely it's a playable position. But the reason after knight to, uh, knight to f3, now comes a deadly move, which is queen to h3 check. So white is going to play queen g2, and after playing queen g2, it definitely looks like okay, perhaps white is going to hold this position. But not for so long because now comes a fantastic move. Queen to f5 by black. The reason after queen to f5, black is winning. Here, the queen, as well as the bishop on b7, is attacking the knight on f3. So, if white tries to protect the knight on f3, uh, it's a, it is a fourth move to move the king to f2, trying to protect the knight on f3, which is the fourth move to protect the knight on f3. But now comes a very simple move. The knight is hanging on c3, so black is simply going to capture up the knight. And if I talk about now um, uh, materials, uh, then the materials are equal, even, but black is a pawn. And if I talk about king safety, definitely white king is just completely destroyed. The idea of black is very simple. Black is going to play rook to e6, followed by rook f6. Hitting the knight as well as the king, and the king cannot move from the f2 square, yeah, because the knight is hanging on f3. The, that was the reason that after move number 21, um, after playing queen d7, Robert Bryant with the white pieces resigned the game, yeah, because it is definitely not a comfortable position for white to play, and he just resigned the game, yeah, and if I talk about Bobby Fischer, it was a fantastic game played by him. Um, so, if you all guys enjoyed this fantastic game, a short game, it was a short game, must often do one move, but Bobby Fischer just crushed him, crushed White. Uh, so, if you like this game, then you can like the video. If you are new to my channel, then you can subscribe to my channel. I I'm going to come up with these new videos for you. So, till then, stay tuned and keep watching Chess Fights.